Will democracy survive the next couple of years? Access to Democracy is made possible by donations from the following organizations. Thomson Reuters, a global company with expertise and insight to unravel complex situations in the areas of law, tax, compliance, government, and media. Their worldwide network of journalists and editors keep customers up to speed on relevant global events. Thomson Reuters, the answer company. Crutchfield Dermatology, a full-service treatment center and medispa in Egan. Their goal is to help you look good and feel great with beautiful skin. With service built around courtesy, dignity, and respect, Mayo-trained Dr. Charles Crutchfield personally treats each patient and is acknowledged as one of the nation's best physicians. True Stone Financial, with locations in Minnesota and Wisconsin, has proudly served as members since 1939. True Stone engages, educates, and supports its members to ensure they have the tools to empower their financial well-being. True Stone Financial, your neighborhood credit union. Learn more at truestone.org. Edina Eye Physicians and Surgeons, a division of Twin Cities Eye Consultants, has proudly served the Twin Cities for more than 55 years now in seven convenient locations. Using the most advanced technology combined with human touch, Edina Eye offers comprehensive services and dedicated specialists committed to excellence with innovative procedures and expertise for the most advanced eye care. Welcome back to Access to Democracy. Uh, Alan Miller with you here again, and we have a return guest and a new guest, uh, combining really to talk about theater and movies and the need for legislative help uh, in what we used to call snow bait, but we don't call it snow bait anymore. But the fact of the matter is <clears throat> there are two bills in the legislature and uh, we want to talk about them with Melody Bahan, who is the executive director of uh, certainly uh, one of our two leading organizations. And uh, Melanie, hello. Hi, Alan. Good to see you again. Always good to see you. Uh, a little bit of background. You are a former journalist and sometime actor, and you've been the head of Minnesota Film TV since 2017. And we're joined today with Mark Bradley. And uh, he's a newcomer as a thespian. Uh, well, maybe <laughs> <not>. hardly. <laughs> <laughs> Representing SAG AFTRA. And why don't you tell us about, because they used to be Screen Actors Guild and AFTRA used to be two separate organizations. So Mark, why don't you explain a little bit of your background and uh, the combination of the two companies? Sure. Um, I've, I've been a professional actor for, for many, many years, uh, mostly here in the Twin Cities. I've worked at, uh, you know, several of the theaters, um, the uh, at the Guthrie and Chanhassen and the Old Log and uh, some of the other smaller theaters throughout, um, throughout the Twin Cities. Um, and I'm a member of both Actors' Equity, which is the Stage Actors' Union, and SAG-AFTRA, which represents people in film, television, and uh, recording, uh, basically, as well as broadcasters. Um, you want to ask a little bit about the history of the unions. Um, they were both founded in the 1930s, Screen Actors Guild, and the, then it was the American Federation of Radio Artists. And uh, then when television came along, it kind of messed everything up. And uh, AFRA added the T to its name to include television. And uh, you had all kinds of uh, sometimes nasty disputes, sometimes negotiations about where jurisdiction would lie um, between SAG and AFTRA. And there were talks about merger going on for many, many years. And we tried it twice and failed. And finally, in 2012, uh, we merged the two unions into uh, SAG-AFTRA which is um, the largest union of its kind in the world. We represent 160,000 people. 
uh, as I mentioned, the, both in, uh, actors and recording artists and journalists and a merger, other broadcasters. A merger of necessity uh, as well as uh, to benefit both organizations and actors worldwide. And Absolutely. I have to make a disclaimer here because while I'm not a member of either union, I did have a starring role in Into Temptation, a locally made film in which I was eight seconds on screen uh, after a three and a half hour uh, really rehearsal and shooting segment, but- uh, Tragically overlooked by the SAG Awards, uh, I have to but, say. <laughs> but I did get a credit in the film and it was a good film, by the way. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, I had to make that disclosure. Now there are two bills sitting in the legislature House Bill 1975 and Senate file, I think uh, 18 or 186 or 18. 1986. 1986, which mm -hmm. might have been a good year, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> but in any event, we need those two bills to move forward because why? Um, what these, what this uh, legislation is, is uh, it would create a film production, film and television production tax credit. Um, so it would uh, help us attract and rebuild uh, our industry here locally. Um, all of incentives are one of the main drivers of our industry and, and where how the decisions are made as to where to locate productions. Um, without a strong incentive program, Minnesota has fallen way behind. Um, we're not getting projects that are written to be shot in Minnesota, set in Minnesota, uh, that could take advantage of our glorious geography and weather and talent. Um, so a tax credit is uh, is a way for us to compete in the industry again. It is an economic development tool. Um, it is something that will help us bring millions of dollars in new spending to the state and thousands of jobs. Um, so, so we've the bills have progressed a bit. So, we're hopeful that uh, we'll be successful this session. And Mark, uh, notwithstanding. Uh, my incredible role in film, uh, we have a history of some great films being shot in Minnesota. Uh, Fargo, Grumpy Old Men, A Serious Man, Dear White People, Sweet Land, uh, Purple Rain, A Simple Plan, Mighty Ducks, and I could go on and on and on. Uh, tell us what that does for the state and well, why you know, we're no longer competing with a lot of other states. Well, I'm glad you, you kind of ended your list with Mighty Ducks, which I was in, by the way, the original one. And there is a TV series now based on that Mighty Ducks story. And some of the viewers may have seen in the newspaper a few weeks back a feature article that was bemoaning the fact that that television show is not being shot here. Disney uh, would not come here even to shoot the exteriors. It's all being shot in Canada. And we also lost the Fargo TV series to Canada uh, because they have a very strong incentive program there. And what we're losing is all those jobs and all that production. And especially a TV series can be, a, can be particularly advantageous because it's not just a once and done movie. It's an ongoing production and uh, that's what we hope to attract. And uh, just to expand a little bit on, on Melody's explanation, there are basically two kinds of incentives. And we have traditionally had a rebate program, which requires a, uh, an appropriation annually from the legislature. And unfortunately, that's not very predictable. It can go up and down. It can go all the way to zero, which it did for a few very unfortunate years, which explains kind of why we lost all that production. Um, and because it's unpredictable, the industry is not particularly wild about looking at states that have a rebate. The tax credit is the kind that's been working in lots of other states. This is not a new idea. Uh, this has been tried and proven 
in other locations. And basically what that is, is instead of an advance appropriation, if a production comes and spends money in the state and there are all kinds of rules so that things are audited to make sure the expenses are legitimate, they can receive a tax credit that's a percentage of that spending. And so that doesn't happen until the production comes here. So there's no advance appropriation. The state does indeed, I'll use air quotes, spend money by waiving taxes after the fact. But again, it's only until that production takes place and all of that money comes in. And the, fact, the, fact, the, the fact of the matter is that people have to understand that we are talking about just not the production and the shooting of the production and the, and the actors that are in it, but all the personnel necessary to set up and break down a production, the hotels that benefit by actors being here, the restaurants, the uh, limousine services, the catering services, it brings millions and millions of dollars into our economy. And to me, it's just a no brainer that where Minnesota was once, com once competitive in that area, uh, that we have fallen so far behind. And, and you know, shame, shame on the legislatures, uh, legislators uh, in allowing that to happen, <clears throat> especially now the backlog of shows has built because of the COVID uh, epidemic. And uh, because there are so many new ways of showing shows and streaming and things that I have no idea what they're talking about. But the fact of the matter is there are a lot more avenues and venues out there for our actors. And we have so many talented ones here. So uh, Melanie, why don't you? Uh, yeah, you Alan, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, and, and this bill, uh, this new program would be a major part of our state's post-pandemic economic recovery, because as you said, there is a backlog of production because production has been shut down all over the country for the last year, just as everything else has been shut down. So, um, and I don't think anyone would argue uh, about the importance of, of uh, movies and television to all of us over the last year. So all of these, these productions, these films and television shows that are ready, ready to get started, these are literally shovel ready projects. If we pass this bill, we can get these, these people to work, we can get this money flowing into the state. And one of the things, I mean, you, you mentioned some of the indirect economic benefit, not just the people hired directly on the production, but, you know, uh, uh, the hotels and the restaurants, two areas incredibly hard hit this past year. Um, one of the other things that we really um, love about our industry is that it is primarily for the direct uh, crew members, it is primarily a blue collar industry um, and with higher wages than average. So, you know, it's one of the few high paying industries that a person doesn't need to have a college degree to go in. You go in as a production assistant and work your way up to a really great paying union job or you decide you want to go to school. Um, so this is this addresses so many of the issues that are of concern to us in Minnesota, you know, uh, uh, job creation and economic development and economic recovery. As you said, it's it is a no brainer. I, well, I, if I could uh, jump on the, just for a moment. Yeah, uh, I, would, I would like you especially to talk about friends of yours who are out of work as a result of the theaters being shut down and no productions here. Yeah. Uh, let me talk about my daughter. My daughter's an actor and she works primarily in the theater. And she was in a show last year in March. It was down in Indianapolis at the Indiana Rep. And here came COVID and the, the show shut down and everything else that she had planned for the rest of the year went away. Um, so she has been, you know, pretty much without work. They did a, um, a very interesting production that was done online with actors in several different locations around the country and so forth. But that's not, you can't do that for every show. 
and people want to get back uh, to doing the work. And so um, she's an example of um, people who have lost really their livelihood. And she was really kind of worried that she'd lost her career um, as to how it's, how are things going to recover? And in any actor located in Minnesota, and I can tell you this from my years, you have to cobble your career together. You don't just work in the theater. You have to work in various media. And so film, television, commercials, all that stuff is an important part of the careers of just about every actor I know. So what we're trying to get back is that important part of the industry. Um, but I do want to back up just a, a step or two and, and, and hit what you were talking about, Alan, that not all the jobs are involved with people who are the actors or the crew or the drivers, the people who are working on the production itself. We have some um, uh, statistics that we like to quote. Two thirds of the jobs that this industry generates are not directly in production. There are all those things that you mentioned, the caterers, the, um, the hardware store, the restaurants, the hotels, transportation, all of that. That's two thirds of the jobs. So we're very anxious to um, stress that when we talk to legislators, that it's not just self-serving for those of us who work in the industry. It's a much larger group of people that benefit from film and TV. I know going back to the days when the, we had snow bait, uh, I had op-eds in the Star Tribune on two different occasions, really chastising the legislature for not doing more to, to bring these movies. And we had so many really well-known movies that used to be made here. And where have they gone? You mentioned Canada. Well, Canada is one place, but Louisiana is another place and several other states. Uh, I remember Born on the Fourth of July, uh, the Tom Cruise movie, uh, and uh, it involved a, a town where I grew up on Long Island, Patchogue. Uh, what happened is they sent it to Texas and they created a new Patchogue for Texas. Mm -hmm. We have the facilities here. We have the personnel here. We have everything that's needed here, except the jobs and the jobs will help our economy. So to me, I just don't understand why there's a reticence even to uh, you know drag this thing out. And the legislature is now heading down the final uh, stretch as they're only around for about five months. So uh, pick it up from there. Yeah, and, and well, as I said, we have made some progress um, this year. We are uh, in the, in the uh, House omnibus tax bill. Um, we are not in the Senate version, but uh, being in the House version means that, that when they go into conference, um, at least we're, we're still at the table. Um, so right now we're, we're just waiting for the conferees to be named and um, those are the folks that we want to reach out to and, and leadership, of course. Um, but we have, it's not just bipartisan support, it's tripartisan support because we have uh, the Senate, on the Senate side, the lead author was uh, Senator Tomasoni, who is now an independent. So we have authors uh, of this bill who are independents, Democrat, DFL, and Republicans. Um, it's it it just it needs to get through this year. And um, you know, we we keep hearing that uh, that targets are tight, but this is a bill that is really going to provide serious benefit for our state. Um, economically in terms of jobs and also in terms of just it, it, the promotion of Minnesota. Um, I mean, everyone uh, who sits through the credits of film and television uh, is familiar with the, the Georgia peach that appears at the end of the credits. Um, that is because those shows take advantage of Georgia's incentive program. And that's what we would like to see. And one of those things that we don't talk about is the fact that tourism is helped tremendously by these productions. Absolutely. It makes people 
want to come here. It makes people want to see the boundary waters. It makes them want to see, and, and we've certainly had some bad publicity about Minneapolis in the last year that has been discouraging. I've gotten emails from friends saying, you know, why do you want to live there? Well, the fact of the matter is, that is a microcosm of what we live with. And what we live with is a gorgeous state with talented people. Uh, and we, we want them to share that with the rest of the world. Uh, I was gonna mention the fact that support is from both sides of the aisle. And now I find out it's three sides of the aisle. Yeah. So uh, Mark, what, what is in the hopper in terms of productions if we get this bill through, do you know? I don't know specifically. Um, you hear things you know, on the grapevine of um, productions that would like to come here, but uh, Melody may know more about that than I do. But one example of something we lost was a, a pilot that was shot by HBO called Mogadishu, Minnesota, and it was about the Somali community. And they shot the pilot here, but even while shooting the pilot, they said, you've got no incentive. If this goes, we're going to shoot it in Canada. And so that's just an example of the kind of thing that it was a Minnesota story. They, they actually did shoot the pilot, but they weren't going to shoot the, uh, the uh, rest of the episodes here because we don't have an incentive. Yeah. And Alan, you, you mentioned, um, you know, the, some of the, the trouble that Minneapolis has seen in the last year with um, uh, violence and, and racial injustice. Um, one of the things that I think is important is that, you know, those stories are going to be told uh, in film and television, and they should be told by Minnesotans in Minnesota. Um, you know, there is a real sense of, of pride and, you know, civic ownership of our stories. And, you know, like Mark, I'm, I'm getting really tired of watching Minnesota stories being told by Canadians and Georgians. Um, nothing against those fine folks, but, um, you know, we have filmmakers here. We have storytellers here. Let's get this tax credit passed, build up our industry, and let our own filmmakers get to work here. Well, I have nothing against the Canadians, but when it comes to the Georgia legislators, <laughs> believe me, uh, I have a lot to say. And these are people who are trying to keep minorities from the polls. These are people uh, who want to win elections by having not a majority, but having a selective majority. And uh, we don't have that here. Uh, we have a wonderful election system here. And I would think that we would want to forward that and really, you know, be proud of that as I am and I and know you people are, uh, rather than see it go to Georgia politicians who are making money for their state, stealing films and TV productions that we should be having here. Uh, <laughs> Mark, I think you probably have feelings on that. Well, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, you know, I've, most of us have heard that uh, Will Smith was pulled his movie out of Georgia because of the recent legislation there. But somebody made a point that this is may not be a particularly good time to ask black people to come to Minnesota. But uh, setting that aside, uh, the, the industry knows that this is a great place to work and that we have great people. And uh, it's not so much that we are competing with other states, because as Melody said, there's a huge backlog of projects and we just want our part of it, our share of it. The stuff that should be here, we want to have shot here. I was talking to some friends yesterday and, and we were saying, you know, every once in a while we hear about, uh, is the legislature, is the state gonna support other industries in some way? Take for example, mining, we've heard a lot about that. And the last article I read about that said, well, the ore might run out in so many years. Well. When you talk about telling stories, the ore will never run out. We have an inexhaustible industry here, an inexhaustible supply of raw material. Our industry can sustain itself forever and it doesn't damage the environment. So uh, that I think is an important thing to keep in mind. And an another thing is uh, theater 
movies don't pollute the environment. That's right. Uh, and they don't uh, affect us adversely in terms of ecological health. Mm -hmm. If anything, they enhance our health, they enhance our mental health, and they certainly make our lives more enjoyable and more relaxing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's something that also should be considered. Yeah, and that was pre-COVID, um, all of the big studios had very, very strong environmental initiatives. Um, and a lot of the studios, I know uh, Disney and HBO both had uh, an onset person whose job it was to make sure that the set was green. So um, now that's changed with COVID because of, you know, you can't have uh, reusable uh, utensils and things like that. But that is, uh, the this industry is certainly on the forefront of that. And uh, <clears throat> so as, as we wind this uh, conversation down, uh, have you done a lot of lobbying uh, to the legislature and have you really used your power in terms of getting the actors and the production people and all to write to their legislators and urge their legislators to get on board with this? I, I'm going to let Mark answer that, but I just want to say that we there is no way we would be in the position we're in right now in the legislature if it were not for the incredibly hardworking folks at SAG-AFTRA and IATSE and the Teamsters, but SAG-AFTRA has been really at the center of organizing. And Mark, do you want to say something about that? Yeah, just real quick. Um, we started off saying we want to get labor organized behind this because that's our house and so we talked uh not only to other un individual unions but we talked to all of the central labor bodies around the state got everybody behind it and um we've been told that it's really unprecedented in terms of the kind of organization that was done but now of course we're reaching out to uh, other people chambers of commerce other people who are not necessarily in our house because the important thing is we've said several times in this talk it's not a red or blue issue uh it's a it's a green issue this time talking about money uh that it is a business issue it's about jobs and businesses so um yeah, we've done quite a bit. And uh, as we get to that uh, conference committee, we want to reach out to those conference committee members and uh, really drive home our point to them. Uh, we have been talking with uh, Mark Bradley of SAG-AFTRA and uh, a first time guest and welcome and, and come back again. Love to. And Melody Bahan of Minnesota Film TV. Uh, Melody's been with us quite a few times since 2017. And we really look forward to that. We look forward to urging the legislature and this program will be up in many localities shortly. We urge also people to get on the phone to their legislators. If they care, if they care about the state, the jobs and the reputation and the tourism, do your part as well. And of course, I am available for any non-speaking roles in what comes up in the future. So I thank you both and keep me in mind. And uh, thank you both for being with us today. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Great to see you again.